for joining us today. You are about to hear a message from Pastor Dayton Efet Damala of the Sons and Daughters of Zion Ministry Worldwide. Be blessed as you listen. Father, in Jesus' name, eternal Lord, I give you all the praise, glory, honor, and adoration. Because indeed all power belongs to you. Your word is settled, even in heaven it is settled. That I thank you because your word gives life. That I thank you because you send your word to today to us and it healed us. Thank you because we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. That I thank you for your liberation word. Thank you for your light illuminating word. Thank you because as I address these issues, you will bring deliverance, immediate deliverance to everyone, everyone that is a victim in the name of Jesus. I command your deliverance right now. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm trusting God to give me expressions. I'm trusting him to bring deliverance to you, to bring healings to you. I know several people who are taking up this lecture to listen to some may be listening to it to know about it and then to help others but some are actually in the midst of it they are tired and they need help this is your help this is your help i'm going to be talking about lost masturbation and pornography lost masturbation and pornography as a growing young man myself i've had my own share of experience in these daily things even though it may not be as deep as many people will want to see i'm going to share my experience with you as I go on in this lecture anyway. We are going to be focusing more on masturbation and I'm trusting God that this is your solution. This is the app. This is the cure you have been looking for. Let's quickly define these things. Lost. Lost is simply when you think in your heart, when you are thinking in your heart about being sexually intimate with a person. A lady who saw a boy and then who concentrates on the on the manhood of the boy on the penis of the boy and then she's she's carried away she she's feeling sexually aroused as a result either by either when she saw it or after some time maybe in the house or on the way or at night and maybe talk with someone also you talk with someone and never the way the person feel you are feeling sexually aroused you are beginning to cast your thoughts into it there's actually no lust without thought it is thoughts that actually bring about this thing called lust, and it doesn't and it doesn't just come on it's it's mostly triggered by by what we have seen and then maybe um on LD or two com or closeness or the opposite says that is too much for comfort maybe your body is touching each other you are rubbing your body on each other you um you talk in ungodly hours well in the morning late at night all those things triggers lost and masturbation masturbate okay in the case of a get of a of a young man young man may see a lady a breast a botox a, a, or maybe a tie any other a cleavage any other exposing part of our body which may trigger lost in a young man or maybe some movies watch pornographies and so on You're beginning to think of being sexually intimate or getting aroused as a result of that thought which result from what he have seen or felt uh, like i said rubbing your body against opposite sex or even speech could arouse distance and the third one is uh, the second one is masturbation masturbation is is fondling your manhood in the case of a boy a boy who fondle his manhood to get it erected and from erection to ejaculation and people somebody will say i only found in my own does not bring out ejaculation well you have not only completed the masturbation process you have started already and then a lady will rub on her clitoris or even deep into her vagina to rub it to stimulate herself sexually and to get to the point of orgasm that is the peak of it a guy ejaculates a lady enters orgasm I believe you understand it in that simple sense. And for and pornography, pornography is looking at um, uh, unclad pictures, it's looking at the nude pictures, or looking at seducive pictures, or movies, or videos, 
and to some people merely posters where they draw breasts could even trigger off could even be pornography to somebody to some other people it could even be this normal nollywood bollywood that is pornography to another person but on the on the on the average when you look at when you deliberately look at um posters on um, pictures movies that shows um nakedness nude either in the case of a lady who is looking at the same or in case of a boy look at the same and then for that pornography is when you look at a sexual act um, in movies and pictures and so on that is pornography and this often trigger of lust and it often trigger of masturbation we could say lust could lead to masturbation we could also say pornography could lead to masturbation and it often lead to it so in this teaching i'm going to be concentrating more on masturbation and of course we're going to be touching every other area several people have come to me for help concerning masturbation and i've been able to help by the grace of god so people i can't even find a way to help them i just tell them try to come and see me but i have said it on my heart that whatever i will tell anybody that comes to see me i can put it together in this teaching and i'm glad that it's giving me this privilege and i pray you'll be blessed indeed already you are getting blessed amen um, it's uh, you see ma- it's masturbation as it is. It's all about principle. Coming out of it is all about principle. I tell you, there's a room for prayer. There's a room for fasting. There's a room for deliverance. Some people even say, "I'm bewitched. I'm addicted. Let them do the deliverance for me." See, that is not. There is room for all those things, and I'm going to pray for you. If I'm going to pray deliverance on you anyway. I'm going to lead you into into de- into deliverance. But that is not actually where the main thing is. The main thing is a matter of principle. A matter of principle like someone who is saying he masturbates you can't masturbate in the market you can't some masturbate in the open place so if you avoid getting yourself lonely if you avoid getting yourself in a secretive place you won't masturbate isn't it so there are there, there are there are principles you can put in place there are principles you can put in place to get yourself rid of these things and I'll be stating some of these principles um i tell you many have been out of it many have been have been on it since they were a kid and some have gotten delivered by the grace of god you can also get the delivered and like i told you earlier just be ready to put to put the principles into practice promises does not take any man into the promised land it is step by step of faith that do so only step by faith does promise does not take any man to the promised land step of faith does principles so it's what's going to help you. There's no power, magic, or God holding you, or God uh, crushing you to get you over it. You can apply these principles and then you start getting withdrawn from it. There is a research that says many virgins masturbate. That a lot of people who claim to be virgin have never had sex, even masturbate. There's a lot of them that do so. And I believe in that research based on my interviews and experience. Most of those who masturbate, who masturbate also watch pawns. Yes, most of those who masturbate watch pawns. And many of those who lost also masturbate. Many sexually active single masturbate. Many people who are sexually active, who have had sex or who do have sex also masturbate. Many who have boy and girlfriend used to masturbate. Yes, because this relationship, unhealthy relationship, talking an ungodly hour, sending pictures to each other, even when it does not even come to that, or sex, sex thing, as they said, or maybe if that may not even come to that, but once you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, there's a likeliness that you fall in lust and then you will masturbate. Many people in this category actually masturbate. Many who indulge in lonely places, quiet places, in fact, many quiet people, they indulge in masturbation and they indulge in lust. Uh, many in lust also masturbate, as I said earlier. Now, the first principles. This teaching may not necessarily take a long time. Just get the principle. The first principle you must have at the back of your mind is to ask yourself, what are your triggers? Talking about masturbation now, what are the things that triggers you to masturbate? Or let's start with lust. What are the things that triggers you to lust? Is it a boyfriend you have or a girlfriend you have? Is it the kind of movies you watch? Is it, is it the friend you talk to? Is it even pornography that leads you into lust? 
and then what leads you into masturbation is it after you finish speaking to that girlfriend or boyfriend is it is it when you visit some site I remember a time because I'm a kind of person that I love to read news. I was I used to visit this at, at that time, and then when you read news from that site, they will give you a link. They will put one one pornography link there. Want something on 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 pornography, and then when you are curious, you want to know, you press it, and then you are gone. Or maybe on your Facebook page, there are some flashes. Um, pages it brings to you that may even drive you into lust. There are programs you watch, there are movies you watch that even triggers other lost masturbation or pawns in you or in you. You have to be able to identify your your own trigger. What triggers someone may not be what triggers you. Your own trigger may be two or three things. It could be social media. Then when you know this your triggers, you know how to undo it. One important trigger you need to deal with is relationship or or friendship. And Bible in First Corinthians 15:33 says, "Be not deceived; evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Be not deceived. Evil. If you, I always say, if you don't have a girlfriend, you must not have a friend." that as a girlfriend they will corrupt you if you don't masturbate don't have a friend that masturbate the first set of people will introduce masturbation to me and the only set of people that introduce masturbation to me as well that all of them were masturbating in my school i have a category of friend i move with but because of where i live there are some guys from my classroom, I was an SS2 at that time, who also lived in that area, so I began to move with them. It was, they were the first person that told me that there's anything called masturbation. I was like, I don't know it. And then they described it to me, they told me how to do it, and so on, and they told me to go and practice it. See the book of Psalms, one verse one is complete. It said, Blessed is the man. I made this verse my watchword, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is that man. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And he only moves with those who delight in the law of the Lord. And he is able to meditate in it day and night. He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You can't commit sin, sexual sins with some kind of people. You can't fall into masturbation when you leave some categories of friendship. People who will influence you have to be bad people themselves. People who will make you feel happy, make you feel uh, the environment you can thrive or something can thrive in you will be a negative environment. So when you change your friends, when you move with other people, when you keep away from boy or girlfriend, you will be easy, you will be able to overcome this thing. Flee. The Bible says flee. Flee every appearances of evil. Flee also youthful lust. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Follow them that call upon the name of the Lord with a pure heart. Delete those friends. Delete those friends who will like a pornography page from your Facebook. Detach from them. And in fact, if you realize that social media is, is, is the bond, is the bridge that is that bridge you with those things. Leave social media, leave some groups. You can leave Facebook, you can leave Instagram, you can you can take a break, you can get detached away from it until you are strong enough to be like the site I told you about. I don't have that site again. I don't visit that site again. Even now, if I visit that site, like there are other sites, I must not but visit. I have to take my eyes away from some things. But I'm strong enough to do that. If you're not strong enough to use social media, you get away from it until you are strong to be able to do it. The Bible says, For verily I say unto you that whatsoever uh, the, uh, the, the Bible says in the book of Matthew 5, verse 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast 
into hell. I read this scripture as a kid and I kept it to heart. I was able to put these things in practice. I was able to do away with things that could bring me further into sin. James 4 7 says, Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from thee. Resist the devil and he will flee from thee. If some of us, some of you, it could be a kind of environment that you are exposed to. Some of these environments you can even afford altogether. And when you cannot avoid it, then you can minimize it. When you cannot minimize, you can apply other things that will detach you from those triggers, especially lust. Lust can trigger any of those things in you. Bible says, "For I, but I say unto you, that's Matthew 5, 28, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Stop looking around. Stop when you see something that attracts you uh, lustfully. Keep your eyes away from it. While I was battling with lust, as a place I will not be passed through at times, there's a video club in that place, and the man will put up a pornography poster. And what I do is to keep my eyes away from it, is to keep my eyes away from it. So you must be able to know the triggers and put measures to the triggers. Put measures to the triggers. Now the second thing is to be able to fire thought firing your thoughts or let me use the word firing now let me use the word rebook rebooking thought i told you many of these things there is no sin you communicate that does not start from your heart it starts from your heart when you think of stealing it starts from your heart when you think of masturbating it starts from your heart when you think of watching pornography start from your heart even lost start from the heart and let me simply share my own experience with you how i overcame lost i'm still going to come to the point of masturbation also uh, uh oh how i overcame lust was that anytime um maybe in that place i told you i do pass through and i see the see the poster or whatever it is i can't remember it's been a very long time now i remember anything that triggers it things i could afford you know there's something about thought there's something about thought you could stop a bird from perching on your head but you may not stop a bird from flying in the sky from flying above your head right you can st- you can prevent some thoughts from coming in you can avoid some three three triggers but when thought eventually comes into your mind and you're already thinking about that action do this first thing rebook that thought and say it out loud I rebook the thought for masturbation in Jesus' name. You need to say it out, even if it is with a whisper that nobody will hear, but make sure you say something out. The demons, the devil that are operating on you, they can hear it. So you whisper to yourself, I rebook this lustful thought in Jesus' name. I have done that severally, and that was how I had my breakthrough. I would say, I rebook this lustful thought in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive me for taking loss fully, and I plead the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. I could say it in the bus. I could say it in the cab. Nobody's going to hear. I'm not even say anything out of my mouth. I will just whisper. Just make sure my lips is moving that the devil can hear. And the Bible emphasizes it. Mark 11, 23 says, Mark 11, 23 says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, you must say and keep saying, keep rebooking. Say unto this mother, I will even add, I rebook every demon of lust in Jesus' name. If it is masturbation, you say to yourself, I rebook the thought for masturbation in the name of Jesus. Daddy, forgive me for thinking about this thing. I plead the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. For whether I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Let me read that passage again. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, that's the number one, say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, that shall believe that those things which he say it. That's another say, say it shall come to pass, it shall have whatsoever he say it. 
Jesus saying you should say three times in just a verse. Say, say, say. If you listen to my teachings on CDA, confess, declare, and announce, you will know why whatever you say or whisper carry weight. The Bible says we are encompassed with great assembly. And it begins to mention the spirit, the kind of um, audience around us. If you listen to that teaching, you will notice that when you in the environment you are is a spiritual environment. There is devil, there are demons, there are angels, there are spirits of the just men made perfect. All of them are there. So whatever you say is processed in the spiritual realm, and it has a strength it gives to overcome that influence from the devil or that addiction. So when you say it that way. I tell you, when I started the rebooking Lost, I also read it from a book, Rebecca Brown, and then I decided to put it into practice. It was Rebecca Brown's book, um, A Verse One to Honor. But I'm not advising you to get that book because it's more enlightening. It's not just Lost Masturbation, it was on another concept entirely. I just applied it into Lost and it actually helped me. Now, you need to keep saying to the book. You need to keep saying to the book. You need to keep saying to the book. The thought may come 100 times. I'm not exaggerating now. The lost food thought could come 100 times. At times, I would have even slipped into it. Lost in already. You might have even about to start masturbating. When you will pick up your mind up and recover yourself, immediately you recover yourself. You say, Lord, I receive forgiveness in Jesus' name. I rebook the spirit of lust. I rebook the spirit of masturbation in Jesus' name. I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. You can keep saying the blood of Jesus after you say it's just three lines, three lines. I, I Lord, forgive me. Oh, I receive, I receive forgiveness in Jesus' name. I rebook the spirit of masturbation in the name of Jesus. I am covered with the blood of Jesus. And you can keep reciting the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I told you at that time the thought could come like hundred times, but I keep say, repeating that word hundred times. For like a week it was like that. It was a battle in my mind. The second week from hundred it dropped to like thirty, thirty percent. And then it came thirty times. I also rebook it thirty times. Then, like the following month, it dropped to like 10. The Bible says, So mightily greed the word of God, and it prevailed. When you keep speaking the word, it will prevail over the mountain. When you keep speaking to that mountain, that mountain will roll away. So you keep speaking it, keep speaking. I wish you can see me in the studio and see the effort I'm putting to explain to you that it is in saying it that you have your victory, no matter how many times it's come. You may even talk and not move your lips, just so that the devil does not hear what you are thinking. He only hears what you say. So you keep rebooking. Lord, I receive forgiveness for lusting in Jesus' name. I rebook this thought in the name of Jesus. I rebook the demon of masturbation, the demon of lust, the demon of pornography in the name of Jesus. I am covered with the blood of Jesus. Those, those just three words, just make sure you are saying it out aloud. And number three, number one is what are your triggers? Number two, rebook the thoughts. And number three is be desperate. Be desperate. Be desperate. Be desperate to come out of it. Especially masturbation. Let me teach you something you will do. Hmm? When those friends of mine told me to go and masturbate that day, when I got home, they told me to get a cream to use with it. I would just go to the bedroom and then I would take water or something as if I wanted to go and bathe and then I will use cream. I, I actually don't know what they were talking about, so I decided to put it into practice. When I got home, what the cream, available cream I saw was aboliki balm. So, with my own ignorance, I just pick aboliki balm. I don't know why I would pick aboliki balm of all things. I was in SS2. <laughs> and I picked the balm. Was SS2 or SS3? Something, something in between. And I picked the aboliki balm, took water to the bedroom. And you know when you mix aboliki balm with water? You know how hot it used, it used to be to become. Uh -huh. As I began to rub the rub against my mouth and it begins to pepper me, I had to take water and then I had more trouble. So I ended up pouring all the water on my body and then ran out to never try it again. And, and to the glory of God, I would have go back to practice it in a better way. But I got a book that same way because I've been a reader all my life. 
I got, I just saw a book on the table, I picked it, it was speaking about masturbation and I identified that it was actually a sin and so on and that was the only time I ever made that attempt. So you know what you will do for me? The next time the urge to masturbate come to you, get a buliki bar or get pepper or anything that can, just get pepper, dry pepper, uh, just put some and then try to, to do it and then whatever your experience is next time it comes next time the urge comes go and do the same again you know when you are desperate that way you will actually be free i know you can only try it once and that once you will surely be free i believe that so put it into practice be desperate concerning pornography you can break your phone you can stop using a smartphone you can break your sim card you can do things that will that will show that you are serious that will detach you Cut away from those friends, from those bad friends. Do something desperate, do something serious. Look at Job. Job says, Job 31 verse 1, Job 31 verse 1 says, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? And I went further to research what Job meant by saying I made a covenant with my eyes that it will not think that is lost over a lady. It will not look at them. Let the uh, let little talk of let the little talk of thinking or lost it. As well, God prompted me to make a further research on the nature of covenant Job made. And I realized that Job is not a man that just speak. He was a man who was very careful of God. So the covenant is making in this place is like placing a curse on himself that whenever he look at the nude of a lady, look at the breast of a lady or the buttocks of a lady, so so things should happen to him. That was the kind of covenant Job made. I would advise you to go and place a curse on yourself, but you can be also desperate. You know, in Greek, that place in Greek is read as tamen tamen spondas, or in Latin it is Isaac Fudos, or in Hebrew it is Berit Karat. Now it means to cut a covenant from cutting down or cutting in pieces. It means like striking down or striking a deal. It's a kind of covenant that will involve killing an animal. That whoever kill an animal or cutting the animal into pieces, that if you should break that vow, that was that that is how it should be cut into pieces as well. It's not just a, a vow. It's, it's not just a covenant. It is a serious attempt of him. Maybe man Job was fighting with lust, and he tried to be desperate. You need that form of desperacy. You need that form of desperacy to come out of it. And to some people, it may take immediate action. Like if you try what I ask you to do concerning masturbation, if you are a lady, don't fear. I, by the grace of God, I have I, I studied very well. If you if you put pepper under you as a lady, it cannot it cannot arm you in the future. It cannot arm your childbearing. It cannot arm anything about you. It will only stop you from masturbating. So the next time the urge came upon you, can't control yourself like you always say. Get a little dry pepper and apply it there or i don't know if what rub will do for for you whether it will really uh, well you can put rub too i mean a body key bam this time around uh-huh. something that will just make you to feel better don't use knife to cut anything please if you put those things i mentioned pepper or a body key bam i'm sure it will be the last you will ever do you have to be desperate and to some people if they take these things with levity and it may take longer it may take some time and actually to some people it may take some time it may take some time um but if you apply the principle well it will be very very fast and on the last note let me address the matter of guilt matter of guilt guilt associating to lost masturbation or pornography you find yourself watching any of these things and hey, you can also try it. the next time you want to watch pornography put paper on your eyes and then begin to watch uh-huh. put some paper just blow some on your eyes and then you begin to, to watch it then you will you will be able to overcome this thing it will not arm it will not arm your eyes it will only pepper you for, for some time every <laughs> or you put a bully key balm also praise god now let me address the matter of guilt 
when you are trying to come out of these things and you fall into it either by a mistake or by your fault or somehow somehow you fall back into it the next thing that comes to you is guilt guilt is um guilt is guilt comes as a result of what we think god is thinking about us now you'll be you'll be feeling guilty towards me if you steal from if you stole from me and i caught you the next time you see me you'll be feeling guilty you will want to be sure that i have actually forgiven you absolutely and i do not count it for the guilt to leave your heart so when we are guilty for doing a secret sin and we are guilty before god it is actually as a result of what we think god is thinking about us and let me tell you that what you think god is thinking about you is actually wrong this is what god is thinking about you see god is not the devil it is devil that bring guilt god does not bring guilt so guilt itself does never originated from god god said adam adam where are you tell me didn't god knew adam has sinned he still came to them he didn't come in an aggressive way he didn't come raining brimstone and the likes he knew the weakness of man so he came as a father to, to, to them Adam 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 said I had your voice and I hid myself I had your voice and I hid myself the guilt came from the devil it came from the devil from the sin never coming from God so God does not own that guilt so people will say anytime I masturbate my spiritual life goes down it's not as if your spiritual life goes down it is the guilt that makes your spiritual life to go down it is the guilt that makes your spiritual life to go down not as if your spiritual life actually went down as a result it was the guilt the Holy Spirit does not leave you does not depart from you even when you masturbate see the bible says we can never be separated from the love of god nothing can separate us he has loved you before you gave your life to him you didn't become his child because you were no longer a sinner when you were yet a sinner he died for you so note that the guilt is not from god it is from the devil and god does not even see you as a sinner the day Jesus Christ saw many sinners, you know what Jesus Christ said? The Bible said the harvest is plentiful. So Jesus saw sinners as harvest. When a, a farmer is always happy when there is harvest, he will only be sad if the mango has ripened and is becoming rotten. But a ripe mango, a ripe banana is a joy to the farmer. God, you are a joy to God because you are an harvest not a sinner he sees you as a child learning to walk this were the words Holy Spirit spoke to me when i used to bait in guilt he sees you as a child learning to do what to walk as we are trying to take a step you fell no parent saw his child trying to walk and falling and feel bad he will rather encourage the child say you can do it no matter how many times you fall you can rise again you can be strong and let me give you the bomb god sees you as a holy person he sees you as christ in you the hope of glory he sees you as holy a holy man desperately walking towards overcoming a sin that is the way god sees you help you understand fully so cast out guilt in you always tell guilt you don't belong here it is from the devil i always tell the devil this is father and child business not father and the devil not child and the devil see you cannot offend your father and father asks the devil to come and beat you many of us see god as a man carrying cane wanting you to commit an offense and strike you one that is not god that is not god is looking for a way to help you not a way to kill you not a way to further compound your problem hope you understand that i want to pray for you right now can you make a decision in your heart never to go back to that sin 
Is it lust? Is it masturbation? Is it pornography? Is it even fornication? Make a decision in your heart never to go back to that sin. Make a decision right now. Maybe you have not even given your life to Christ. Can you say, Lord Jesus, I'm committing the whole of my life to you today. I'm committing the whole of my life to you today. I'm committing the whole of my life to you to today. Take my life and grant me peace in the name of Jesus. Can you ask me to forgive you? Can you ask for forgiveness? Tell him, I receive forgiveness. I receive forgiveness over lust, over masturbation, over this and that in the name of Jesus. As a man in the deliverance ministry, for about 10 years, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you the best deliverance, the most effective deliverance is self-deliverance. Can you see, I remove from my life the spirit of lust, the spirit of masturbation, the spirit of pornography right now. Can you pray that prayer seriously, desperately? And I'm seeing God doing surgery on somebody. Thank you, Father. I saw angels doing surgery on some people. They are taking away your heart and giving you a new heart. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord. Makata, Paul, and those are Kata, Yanaba. Can you send those spirit out of you? Send those spirit out of you. Rebook those spirit right now. Rebook them. Rebook them. Rebook them. Rebook them. Rebook them. Rebook them. Makata, Paul, and Tata. Rebook them from around you, from anywhere. If somebody is feeling, do I really have a demon in me? It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that the demon is actually in you. you, you I know you are a child of God, but a demon is influencing that, and there is a demonic power behind it. The Buddha will just cast them out. Say, I cast you out of my life. Out of my life. Cast out of my life. A man does not have to be in your life before you need to cast him out of your life. When we say out of your life, your life is beyond somebody entering you. I hope you get that. I'm saying this because the spirit is telling me that somebody is having an issue with that statement. So say, I cast every evil spirit of lust, of masturbation, of pornography out of my life in the name of Jesus. Can you cast it out right now? And as a servant of the Lord, I speak upon you. I decree your deliverance in Jesus' name. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord saturates your mind. Can you see that peace washing over you? Put these things into practice as you do it. Even if you fall, please rise again. Rise again, again and again. And please share your testimony with me. I really, really want to hear your testimony. The Lord bless you and the command of the Spirit be with you. And before I finish this lecture, yes, please occupy your mind. Occupy your mind. The Bible says when an evil spirit is cast away from someone, evil spirit will go and walk in the desert, in the dark places. And if he does not see any good place, he will come back to his house. If he see it clean and garnished, he comes in, put his load on it. Now, now when to invite seven beta demons, and the end of the person will be worse than the beginning. Now you don't let there be vacuum in your heart. Occupy your heart with the word of God. Occupy your mind with the word of God. As a teaching I took on depression and the mind, you can pick that teaching up and listen to it as well. See, your mind is the center place. It is the battle place. When you read the word of God, it wets your mind. I've always said this. The word of God is like water. Your heart is like basket. Your mind is like basket. Your basket may not be able to retain water. If you put... Um, basket in a river you can't carry water but the basket will be clean the more you bring your your mind your heart in and out of the scripture it is clean it is getting cleaner and cleaner even if you can't remember any scripture in the bible you don't have any quotation or you don't even know john 3 16 but you keep reading the word of god every day I tell you, your heart will become clean and clean. You don't need to read a particular place. You can be reading Psalms and just make sure you read in the version that you like. So maybe NLT or NIV. Just if it is Psalm you can read, be reading Psalm every day. Maybe one chapter or two chapters. Maybe if it's only proverb, if it's only the story part, the Judges, the Chron the Chronicles, the First Kings, Second Kings, or Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, or Acts of Apostles, the any interesting part. As you read these scriptures every day, it helps you. You know when you read pornography novel, you may not even remember the things in that novel, yet you are getting sexually abused. Why? Because it is putting marks on your mind. The same way that the scriptures put mind marks on your mind. And if you want to be a serious student of the scriptures, Get my message, the ministry of the world. Get my message, concept of a personal retreat. Get my teachings and then you will 
come out a giant. God bless you once again and may the communion of the Spirit be with you. Amen. Hope you have been blessed by the message. We are always encouraged to know how God is working through this ministry to change lives. If your life has been transformed or God has used this ministry to move in your life, do take a moment to share a testimony by sending us an email at sadusinternational at gmail.com. For counseling, please contact the following numbers 706 091-6344-0810-652-2911. May the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.